everybody, it's Kai Pacha with the Weekly Pele Report for Wednesday, June 5th of the great year 2024. Oh my goodness. And here it is, the moon has just gone into Gemini. And tomorrow, very early in the morning here in California, well, I'm in Oregon, but... Um, it's going to uh, have a new moon. So we're in the last couple of degrees here before that new moon is happening. And it's conjunct Venus. So we have a moon, sun, Venus conjunction. Where is that conjunction? It happens to be square Saturn. I'm going to talk about that. Venus is exactly square Saturn on Saturday followed by the Sun coming up to square Saturn on Sunday but it's not just one day you got to give three days for these guys so we're pretty much feeling that energy already a little bit of the Sun and Venus both in square to Saturn uh, and then they're going to be moving on as the moon moves into Cancer uh, on Friday whoa <laughs> I'm up here at the fairy pools. This is just a very beautiful, somewhat remote spot. I've never been here before, so I don't know what is coming. <laughs> Mars is in the late degrees of Aries. And by Saturday, Mars goes into Taurus and then comes into a square with Pluto. So I'm going to be talking about the squares. Sun, Venus, square, Saturn, Mars, square, Pluto. Ay, ay, ay. Look at this. This is gorgeous. It's a little bit of a dead end, though. I don't know if I'm going to be climbing up here. So let's wrap this up. Um, moon moves into uh, Leo by Sunday. And then uh, goes right along, trines Neptune, and squares Mars, opposes Pluto, just as it goes into Leo. And then by Tuesday, uh, it comes into a trine with Chiron, and squares Uranus. And that is going to give us a new look at what is going on this week. Let me find a nice little spot to sit here and talk at you okay everybody i'm gonna give this a shot but i am feeling this sun venus square saturn it may be exact tomorrow but i'm feeling it now <laughs> i just walked up and down that creek and it was too loud and too noisy and I'm walking all over looking and looking and looking and not here and not there and da 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 And so I come down to Lithia Park. I'm visiting my brother in Ashland and uh, you know, it's full of people. <laughs> and cars. I just uh, uh, rafted the Rogue. I'll put some pictures at the end of the uh, 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 the Pele Report here today, the Rogue River, scenic and beautiful, uh, went a whole day without seeing anybody and a couple of boats on the other days, but, oh, you know, you get out there and you let down all your walls and defenses and you open and, you know, relax and it's kind of a challenge to come back to Gemini. Gemini is the city. It's busy. It's brothers and sisters and people and business and social media and doo -doo -doo -doo. so here's the Sun Venus in this uh, you know jumping up with you know Mercury and Jupiter in Gemini and bop, 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 but whoa Saturn in Pisces like shh, calling us back. We got to go back, of course, this is a first quarter square, 90 degree square, 
uh, Sun and Venus, you know, 90 degrees from Saturn, Mars 90 degrees from Pluto. So it's always good when you've got these squares to go back to the conjunction. That was the seed that was sown, that was the new impulse that was, you know, wanting to manifest. And we want to just check out, you know, those dates. Yeah. And so first of all, we've got Mars conjunct Saturn. I mean, Mars conjunct Pluto. February 14th. Okay. So February 14th at one degree of Aquarius. Mars conjuncts Pluto saying liberate. Break free from the norm, the conventional. Go into the unknown. Break out of your box into the future. Right? And now, February, March, April, May, you know, three, four months later, okay, we get this 90 degree square, which is about putting into action, okay, in a very real, tangible way, that particular impulse can't remain an impulse. We're going to see with the Sabian symbol today. Okay, these impulses and these instincts, which is Mars, okay, really need to, you know, manifest in this third dimensional, you know, our cultural society with its norms and standards and business as usual and, you know, religious and corporate and, you know, um, political background. I mean, this is what we are. We are, <laughs> we are spiritual beings having earthly experiences <laughs> and we are on this planet Earth. We are inside time and space. Our conscious mercurial Gemini mind is functioning within this framework. So it's, it, it can be distracting. It can be challenging to remain in this sacred, spiritual, divine state of oneness and bliss, when we are being tugged and pulled and distracted and interrupted by all of the daily realities. This is what's really going on, isn't it? Why? Because even more so than that, let's go to Saturn in Pisces. And I talked about this, you know, way back, okay, in March of 23, when Saturn first went into Pisces, and it's there till 2026. Ending, finishing, closing, completing a 28-year cycle. We can go back to 96, 97, 98, when Saturn started a cycle. And Saturn coming around through Pisces, I was thinking about it a little bit. It's a little bit like old age. <laughs> it's the results. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. And Karma is just consequences. It's just consequences for past choices, past decisions, past commitments, past contracts, past agreements made over this long period of time. And so, you know, universally, all of humanity, we are all now dealing, okay, with, you know, seeds that were sown with Saturn, okay, you know, in the late 90s. This is a big, long cycle. And it really brings us into what is Saturn but reflection. And in Pisces, it is reflecting on spirit. Pisces is source. It's the divine. And we know that we have a soul that has dual coexisting desires. The desire to separate from the source that made us and the desire to return to the source that made us. And with Saturn and Neptune both in Pisces, there can really be this pull, this desire 
to return to source, to return even to the womb, to return to the oneness, to let go. And it can turn into escapism. It can turn into thoughts of suicide. It can turn into depression. It can turn into drugs and alcohol as escapism. It can just be like, you know, whoa, you know, this busy world is too much. So if you recall back, it was a few months ago then, the sun was conjunct Saturn, okay, on February 29th. And Venus came around March 22nd and conjuncted with Saturn. And this is the start of a new year. Okay, the Sun and Venus go around once a year and they connect to Saturn. And Saturn kind of, you know, the Lord of time and space, serious, sober, reflection, maturity, that elder energy that wants to bring in judgment and integrity. So it's the Sun and Venus go through Pisces and they have conversations with Saturn. And Saturn says, okay, now, now it's time. And I'm going to infuse you. And after Saturn, they came around to Neptune, right? And I'm going to infuse you with spirit. I am going to infuse you with love, with compassion, with forgiveness, with understanding, because all is one and one is all. I keep thinking of my, you know, one of the mantras that, you know, I chant at the end of a Kundalini Yoga practice, all things come from God and all things go to God. All things come from God and all things go to God. All things come from God and all things go to God. And it all comes out of Pisces, infinite potential, and we all return to Pisces and infinite potential. So what is this time about now? This square about now? I mean, and it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I'm really feeling it because I kind of capsulized it <laughs> into this last week of, you know, going out, you know, on the waters of the Rogue River, uh, you know, of Pisces and, uh, and there, uh, you know, saw this bear. Oh, yeah, that was another thing. This bear that you'll see at the end of the Pele report came down to the river, walked along the river. Beautiful. A beautiful morning, a beautiful day, so peaceful. I'm at one with nature. And the bear climbs up the hill a little ways. And we hear, ah! 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 And the mama deer goes running off. But the bear caught Bambi the little baby fawn. Innocence. And the bear pulled that fawn and we heard it screaming all the way up the mountain until there was one last final scream before the bear devoured the innocent deer. It's the end of innocence. Pisces has that innocent, childish, naive, openness, sweetness that just embraces and flows and doesn't care and just gives of itself and sings and dances. And then it comes through Aries. <laughs> And then down into Taurus, boom, gets out. And now into Gemini, get busy and get to work and do all your stuff. And ah, <laughs> whoa. So yeah, this is like, this is a, a real time period. And that 90 degree square has to do with, again, it is the demons of doubt. 
it does have to do with breaking free from the past, breaking free from the known, taking the impulse and really infusing our lives with it. And so this is a time period where we can't just meditate and we can't just do ceremony and ritual and sing and dance. No, we have to do Pele reports. <laughs> no, we have to do social media. We have to write books. We have to do videos. We have to spread the word. We have to publish. We have to talk. We have to share. We have to spread the good news. We have to, you know, like really bring love, spirit, feeling, beauty, art into this world, not just observe it, but actually, you know, create it, initiate change. And it's not, you know, it's not always easy. There is, like I say, there's the pull of the past. Saturn in some way, shape and form, we want to look at Saturn is form. Right? It is structure. And in Pisces, right, it is dissolving the old forms, dissolving the old structures. So we may be feeling like our boat is going down or our life, uh, you know, the way that we knew it, you know, is dissolving and melting right before our very eyes and our friendships and relationships and futures and belief systems and, you know, our hopes and dreams are all just kind of like And it can be, this is, you know, like I say, this is a challenging period. It's a three year challenging period out of the 28 year period. You know, there's two and a half to three years here that, you know, is ending, finishing and closing. So some of it's like almost like in order to go forward with Sun, Mercury, you know, Jupiter, Venus, you know, moving forward. You see that train, uh, the thumbnail, I'm going to, you know, put up the train now. You can see the whole train happening, except for the Sun and Venus, obviously the Sun set. And Venus is now leading the train. Venus passed by the sun. Okay, so now, you know, she is there on the other side of the sun. She's still in the underworld, but she is rising up out of that underworld. And it's going to be a couple more weeks and we'll be able to see her again in all of her glory. But right now, there may be things going on deep inside. And that's why this week's mantra also talks about emotional honesty. Yes, you know, this objectivity is Saturn. Saturn is objectivity and maturity growing out of innocence that really brings us into this place of reflecting on and becoming honest with our feelings in order to share these feelings, ultimately leading to deeper relationships. And it may be a relationship that you're in now that needs deepening. It may need deepening through commitment and you may fear that commitment. Right? And there may be this, oh, I don't know, I fear that commitment. The other side of that is it may be time to leave a relationship. And you may, be, and you may fear breaking that contract or breaking that past commitment that got you to where you are today, but is not part of your future. Wherever Saturn is, is involved, we know that there are decisions that need to be made. There were some goals set back in late February and early March. If you look back at those goals, that was Sun and Venus conjuncting with Saturn and Spirit kind of giving you a new vision or a new goal. And now these goals are being tested. These goals are being checked. Are you going to stay on course? 
Are you going to really manifest that dream? Or are you going to go back? Are you going to fail? Are you going to let go? Are you going to, you know, not break free, break out, release the past? So it's... This is a pretty challenging time. And of course, you know, it's the same as is true with Mars and Pluto. Even more so because Mars is action, taking action. And what is Mars doing now? Moving into Taurus. Out of fire, instinct, action, and impulse into I'm going to build this house brick by brick. I am going to come into you know, what is Taurus, but a new set of values. So our emotions tell us, you know, and our, they reveal our feelings. Our feelings reveal our needs. Our needs reveal our values. Different people have different values. And we may be bumping up against, okay, or be challenged by other people's values where we need to define our own values. What we feel is beautiful, what we feel is desirable. So we have the square, we have the block, and it can involve confrontation, okay? This can be a time of some very serious conversations. And let's not forget that the new moon sets the tone for the whole month. So we have a moon, sun, Venus squaring Saturn, you know, in the natal chart for this month, right? So it's, it's you know, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful time. So, you know, it's, and it's an important time. These are important decisions that, you know, can really uh, make or break, right? You know, your future. So it's, it's, it's heavy, it's, it's, it's strong. It's necessary to be careful, to be cautious, to reflect, and to, and to you know, it's, it's kind of good that Mars is coming out of Aries, and there's not that impulse so much, but there is. Mars in Taurus is going to be slowing down now for a couple months, yeah? But let me read you this. I'm going to read you two Sabian symbols. Uh, because it is at what? You know, the, the exact conjunction is at 16 degrees, 18 minutes. Okay? So the 16th degree is a woman activist in an emotional speech dramatizing her cause. A passionate response to a deeply felt new experience. But now we come into the actual 17th degree where the Sun-Venus conjunction is square Saturn. The head of a robust youth changes into that of a mature thinker. The transformation of physical vitality into the power to build concepts and intellectual formulations through which knowledge can be transferred. Just let that sink in a little bit. <laughs> That's a lot. While in the preceding symbol, we see the explosive release of impulses generated by a new realization of what is right and wrong. The woman in quotes, way controlled by feelings. Now we have a picture of a process of quiet and steady metamorphosis of biological energy into mind power, which can be seen symbolically as the man way man in quotes. The symbolism may be old-fashioned today, but the two contrasting approaches to communication of new experiences remain evident. 
however one wishes to symbolize them. What we see pictured is the transformation of emotions into mind, of instincts into thoughts, a process of mental metamorphosis. You get this. This is this process of maturing, this process of metamorphosing from maybe this root, passionate, watery earth, feminine energy that has this energy to it to now, you know, the square to Saturn coming into Gemini ruled by Mercury, the thoughts and the thinking and I need to write this contract, or I need to change this contract, or I need to write this book, and I need to really contemplate and become more objective. Air is objective. I talked about that Gemini last week, coming out of Aries, instinctive fire, and Taurus, earthly comfort and you know, really another form, right, of desire, wanting possession, wanting, uh, you know, fulfillment through the five physical senses. We now come into this robust youth, all full of vitality, you know, changing into, right, a thinker. So it is, it's kind of sobering and it's very different than, you know, like, uh, yeah, we just came off of Jupiter, Sun, Venus, woo, 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 and now, boom, you know, get it together, <laughs> you know, boom, sign these papers, boom, get this together, you know, make your website or, you know, make your, da -da -da -da, you know, it will lighten up as that sun venus next week you know as it moves away from the square and mars moves away okay from that square to pluto things will be lightening up but this week what can i say it's you know it's like it's intense it's powerful and it's deep and sometimes we can say saturn is the great test he's like the guardian of the threshold you know are you mature enough are you you know, wise enough? Are you objective enough? Or are you still acting out of your personal, you know, uh, you know, I, me, my, I want this, I don't want that, I like this, I don't like that. Saturn is calling for social action. It's calling for responsible duty to the greater whole. And so that is what maturity is all about. Yeah? It's coming out of our self-centeredness into, right, looking after the next seven generations. And in this case, even looking over the next month or the next few years, but like really, you know, are we really, you know, gifting the, this planet, this world, this time with our spiritual gift? So the mantra for this week, growing out of childhood innocence, I develop objectivity. And with greater emotional honesty, I experience deeper intimacy. Just think of kids in grade school and high school and you know maybe the first love or the first romance uh you know and it's all about you know uh you know just self-discovery and it's all about you know me getting off and it's all about you know me having more or experiencing da, 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 da. but the metamorphosis you know into that maturity okay allows for deeper intimacy deeper connection Yes, you know, because there is, yes, there's caution, but there is also, 
you know, a capacity. The container holds more. We hold more. We carry more. We are more concerned. We are more present. We are more mindful. So that is what this week is all about. And I just got passed up by a busload of teenagers. <laughs> How perfect Gemini, man. Oh my God. Anyway, you gotta let it go. One more time and I am out of here. <laughs> oh, the song for this week. Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, there, there's a violinist over here playing and she played John Barleycorn, which I really like. It's an old traffic song, John Barleycorn. Uh, but then she played Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen. And I love Leonard Cohen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I think I'm going to go with the hallelujah this week. I did have another one coming over here, but I'm going to save that one for another time. Hallelujah, yeah. Growing out of childhood innocence, I develop objectivity. And with greater emotional honesty, I experience deeper intimacy. It's time to be true to yourself, to your newly discovered through that sun Venus going through Taurus, your new values, your new ability to embrace yourself and love yourself. And now it's time to go forward and express it. And through that sharing and also listening, through that conversation, cultivate a deeper intimacy. Namaste, aloha, so much intimacy. Thank <laughs> you.